Here I'm going to show you how to use worksheet functions within your VBA and macros, actual worksheet functions inside the code. It's a really interesting thing that sometimes you actually have to do, it's the only way to get something done, or sometimes it's just easier to remember how to do it using a worksheet function. And this tutorial is a smaller part of a much larger tutorial I have on the full VBA course on teachexcel.com, and it forms an integral part of the first project where we build a professional task manager. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. What we're going to do here is a little VLOOKUP on this data set and then a few other small functions that we can apply here and here as well. So let's go to the VBA window now, Alt F11, open up Module 1, and I'm going to get this guy out of the way. And the downloadable file has a lot more notes and comments that summarize what I'm going to say here. So it's a really helpful thing to download. And let's just start with a very simple thing. How about we get the max of that range of numbers? So this range right here for the quantity. That is B4 to B6. We type application dot worksheet function dot and then whatever function we want. It's kind of interesting the first time that you see this. So here let's go with the max function. And if we do an open parentheses, we get a list of generic arguments. So you do need to know how to use the function before you get in here. And if you ever forget, just go back to the workbook and type the name of the function. And then you get the descriptive and helpful list of arguments. It's a lot more helpful when we start working with match or with VLOOKUP. So get your function working in the worksheet first, and then it's a little bit easier to transfer over here. Another important thing is for all the functions, when you want to access or reference a range, you input a range object. A range object is basically a range reference. So we want to go for B4 to B6. So we go range B4 to B6. We don't just type in the range reference like you would in the worksheet. And we are done. We have now used a worksheet function within VBA. And let's go ahead and output that in a message box so we can see the output. Hit F5 to run the macro, or the little play button up here. And we can see that the max value is 6, 3, 5, and 6. Perfect. And that's really all there is to using a worksheet function, but there are actually many different ways to use it. So let's go ahead and use a slightly more advanced example, and then a more robust one that'll account for errors. And in the full VBA course, there are even more examples that show you how to shorten the syntax and do a lot more really interesting things. And now one of the reasons that you may want to use a worksheet function is because sometimes it's just a little bit easier. So let's say that we want to make A1 my title, capital M and capital T. That is proper case. In the worksheet, it is just equals proper. And you select the cell, hit enter, and you get that. In VBA, it is, well, a little bit less intuitive. You use the strconv function. And then you input your string, let's go range a1.value, and then what do you want to do? We want a VB proper case. And we can go ahead and output that in a message box. Well, how do you do that using the worksheet function? It's a lot easier to remember than strconv for the string conversion. So we can go message box application dot worksheet function dot proper and then range a one dot value. Now it looks like more because we have to type out more, but there are ways to shorten this and I cover that in the full VBA course. But even if you don't shorten it, it's a lot easier to remember to type this than strconv because you're not going to use this guy that much to be honest. So now when we run this, we'll get both versions. They will do the same thing, my title and my title. But so far, we haven't been doing anything too terribly useful. So for the last example, I'm going to show you how to use the worksheet function in a more robust way. And the problem or the reason that we need to do that is because let's go back here. And how about we do a VLOOKUP? And let's say that we want to look for ASC-4. And this is our table array and column index number of two and range lookup will be false for an exact match. NA. So it returns an error. Doesn't seem like a big deal, right? 
Well, when we do that in a macro, it's not going to be so nice. Now, if we find the value, then of course, we return six. So the value from the second column. Now let's go ahead and do that over here. We'll output it in a message box for now application dot worksheet function dot v lookup. Open parentheses. See it's generic argument, so you do want to make sure you know how to use it before you get here. And we will type ASC dash four and then the lookup table. Then the column index and then false. All right, should be no problem, right? We will get NA in a message box. No, <laughs> we get this lovely error, unable to get the VLOOKUP property of the worksheet function class. Okay, what a nice thing. And if you are in here in the worksheet and you run that, you are going to get sent to this window. So it's a very ugly thing. It's not something that you want. Now you wanna make sure that you input it correctly. So we will have it return a correct value now for ASC-3. And we get six, as we should. But in order to account for the fact that it can return an error, we have to do a couple different things. And it's not terribly intuitive. So first up, we're going to declare a variable. We don't have to, but it makes life easier. So we're going to declare a variable. And we'll declare it as my result. Very simple. And it must be a variant, or the type that can hold anything because it's actually going to either hold the result of the VLOOKUP or it's going to be an actual error, not just a text. And now instead of a message box, we go my result equals, but this time we do application.vlookup and it's not going to appear in the IntelliSense menu when you type it. And ASC, let's make it correct this time so it will return an actual value and then arrange a four to b9, 2, and false. And what is going to happen now is if this has a value to return an actual lookup result, then it's going to store it in this variable. If it does not, if it returns the error that we saw a moment ago, then it's going to store the error itself inside of this variable. So we will either get an error, which is not what we want, or we're going to get the value that we want. And what we do now is to check if we get an error or not. And we can use the isError function for that. So isError, my result, and I'm doing control space there to fill in the variable, which we can do since we declared it right here. So you start typing, hit control space, and it helps you fill it in. So if isError, my result, then do a little else and if. And if we get an error, we know that means the vlookup function didn't return a result. So we can say, no result found. If it did, then let's go ahead and output that. So just my result. So now, because of how the application worksheet function works, we go from this nice single line, which returns an error and causes havoc, to all of this. It looks like a lot, but it's a very standard setup. And so once you get used to inputting it, it's not too scary. So let us go back to the worksheet now and run it. For ASC-3, we should get 6 once again, so Alt-F8 to get this window, and then Run, and we get 6, perfect. And let us change it, dash 4, so it will not find anything. Run the macro, and we get no result found. Nice, lovely, no error, we don't see the VBA window, it doesn't take the user away from the worksheet, life is good, they know that nothing was found. And that is the robust, but not terrifically intuitive way to use worksheet functions within your VBA and your macros. And one of the ways that we use this in the VBA course where it becomes really powerful is with the match function. You can actually do a lot of really interesting things with the match functions when it comes to ranges and arrays and filtered data as well. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.